getting started here in just a moment. And we're really excited to have everyone here today. And this is our first kickoff to our STEM careers session. We have a distinguished panel of presenters that will be um, sharing with you some information about working in the events industry and kind of how they got their start in the events industry. We also have the captioning service available. So if you are in need of captioning, just click on CC at the bottom of your screen. This will actually allow you to see the um, captioning that will be provided for this session. We also have two individuals who will be doing ASL for you, so for sign language. So if you would like to pin the videos of Carol Duffy Clay or Roxy Mino, they will be able to, um, or they will be signing throughout the presentation and you can pin their videos to actually see that in a larger format. Um, this is actually the first time we're doing our STEM career session in this type of joint format where we do have high school participants as well as educators and our NOVA um, community college students and presenters from around the U.S. So we're hoping that everything goes off without a, a glitch, um, but we are prepared to get through and manage as well as we can. So if you notice anything that seems a little odd or off, um, please just type in the chat to myself um, or actually to everyone if it's something that is relevant for everyone um, or if you would like to um, message Brittany Hollis is actually another staff member from Northern Virginia Community College who is going to be helping on the back end with things. So um, if you do have anything that you notice you need some assistance, please let us know. We have actually for our version tried to turn off the video for everyone for this session. This helps with the session being able to go through a lot smoother and quicker um, as well as then being able to just focus on the panelist or our interpreters. So please don't feel like we didn't want to see your beautiful faces today. Uh, we're just trying to minimize the focus there. So hopefully everything is going smoothly on your end. Um, we also will be recording this session and it's currently in the recording mode as well as um, we will provide the PowerPoint presentation for this session after the fact as well. So it sounds like we are good to go. I think we will make sure that we have all of our um, participants who are not on video um, to have their videos removed and we will go from there. So if you'll give me just a second, I'm gonna do some transitioning here for you all. So one of the things that we want to do first is we're going to share with you just a brief one minute video from Northern Virginia Community College and a little bit about their hospitality program. So hopefully you have your video turned up um, and your audio turned up so that you can actually hear the information. One of the things I also want to mention is if you have any questions that you want to ask the panelists that you already are thinking about that you want to make sure that we get to, if you can go ahead and type that in the chat, you can type it to everyone so that way we can actually see the questions. And if you have a question that is going to be specific for a certain person, then if you can also um, put the name of that person and we will be introducing the presenters here in just a moment so that you can direct questions to them specifically. Hospitality management encompasses meeting, planning, hotels, restaurants, but our most popular um, is our culinary arts program. Our program's well respected in the entire Washington area. We have tremendous job placement opportunities for our students. A couple of our students have very prestigious jobs. Um, the executive housekeeper at the White House happens to be a graduate of ours, as well as one of the sous chefs right now in the White House is a graduate of our apprenticeship program. 
The success of our program really stems from the exceptional faculty that we have on board. Most of our faculty have extensive industry experience. They all come seasoned into the classroom. One of our special chefs is a certified master chef from Europe. Uh, chef Wilhelm inspires many students to really find that passion they have. I think that's a key for many of our faculty actually working here now. We all love what we do. Uh, we love this industry and we want to share that with our students. So often students don't know what opportunities lie ahead of them. So we try to open those doors and engage them. They do hands-on activities in the classroom like the cooking kitchen. Uh, they also are involved in catering classes, management classes, field trips. Uh, they work out in the industry. Um, so we try to give them a wonderful opportunity uh, to discover what really they want to be doing with their lives. And if you want to come find a terrific program, uh, the hospitality management program has a lot to offer. We're going to spend a little bit of time with our panelists talking about their experiences in the event industry, um, talking about their personal or academic preparation for going into the industry, talking about some of the things that have you know, been involved with a lot of change, and also some of the challenges, and then also any advice that they have to share with you all. So just a little bit of background information, because I know the educators that are on this call know that we focus um, in Virginia, we do specifically focus on our career clusters, and the cl clusters that we'll touch on just a little bit for today will include our arts, business, hospitality, and tourism, and then our marketing area. Some of our career pathways in these areas include our restaurant and food and beverage services, our lodging, travel and tourism, and then our recreation, amusement, and attractions. When we talk a little bit more about arts, entertainment, and AV, that's going to be a little bit more of our visual arts career paths, journalism and broadcasting, some of our AV and technology, telecommunications. So, um, of course, I've listed a couple of other ones here, but just wanted to highlight a few of them that seem to be um, pretty well known in the career pathways. In our business management and administration, that can be some of our areas included in business information management, human resources, and operations, which many of our panelists have served in some of those roles. And then finally, just touching on a little bit of marketing, I kind of tried to incorporate the by the numbers because marketing seems to be all about you know numbers and, and getting people excited about things and, and detail. So um, that can include marketing communications, research, merchandising, and professional sales. So I know this is what you all are really most excited about. You don't want to hear about probably all the educational background, all these things that are required, but you probably want to hear a little bit more about our panelists. So our first panelist up today is Steve M. Moore. He's the catering sales manager for Affairs to Remember with Catering. And you'll see on each of these slides, we do have the contact information. So when we send this out, you are free to reach out to our panelists or follow them on their social media um, you know, areas if we've included that. Um, but you can also see what they are, some of the things they are currently involved in on the slide as well. But Steve M. Morse, his career spans over 20 years and is widely known in the Atlanta hospitality industry for his energetic attitude and exceeding clients' expectations. Steve's attention to detail and his flair for style are just two of the many reasons he is recognized as an industry leader. Just so you all know, Steve actually first got his start as a dishwasher in a restaurant in Southern Virginia, so he is also a Virginia native. Um, he went on to acquire a degree in fashion design and became a renowned makeup artist and trained other makeup artists for elite cosmetic companies such as Christian Dior and Iman. A few of Steve's celebrity clientele include Patti LaBelle, um, former First Lady Laura Bush, and Holly Robinson Pete. In 2000, with his eclectic background in hospitality, fashion, and cosmetology, he turned his focus to designing and planning events after producing his first wedding. Some of the weddings that Steve has been connected with, either online um, or in print, or um, you know, in the, the TV space, have included areas such as Platinum Weddings, Whose Wedding Is It Anyway, The Knot, Martha Stewart Weddings, Allure, and Grace Ormond. Steve has had countless roles in the industry, um, and including an account manager, director of sales, managing partner, and business owner, and he's worked with multiple catering companies. Um, and currently, as I mentioned, he is with Affairs to Remember, and also he has his own very his very own The More Agency. So Steve, if you wouldn't mind to just say hello to our um, guest here today. 
Hello, everybody. Thank you guys for having me. We're looking forward to an exciting meeting today. Excellent. And Steve, if you could just tell us a little bit about um, what we're seeing here, and hopefully this floating little meeting control will go away from y'all's screens here. <laughs> um, just love technology. Um, and so, Steve, can you tell us what it is that we're looking at? Yes. The... And we will go back here. Yes. <laughs> we're looking at India roads. <laughs> yes. yes. And Steve, if you'll keep talking, I might have to like do a little bit of like uh, backing out of the PowerPoint to change the meeting control. Um, so if so, just uh, keep, keep rolling with it. Got it. Um, so the first image that you're seeing with the beautiful berries on top is a chocolate molten lava cake um, garnished with fresh berries. The middle one, I'm sure we're going to have this conversation a little bit later in, um, into the presentation. Uh, with COVID, we actually have pivoted. Uh, we're not really doing our big events as we used to. So we've introduced these shower boxes. And that particular one is the tea shower box. It has a chicken salad um, croissant with a couple of um, sal um, pasta salad. It also has a deviled cheesecake berry, which is amazing. We actually um, inject the strawberry with cheesecake. The, st the image beside of that one that has the martini glass, this was a new, a new item we introduced last year. So our chef does innovations 26 times a year. Uh, needless to say, we're not hungry around here because they, he creates them well, along with the sous chef and the chef de cuisine, presents them to management, and then management, they'll present them to us, the sales team, before they even make it to our consumers. This particular item is called the Grain Teeny. Um, bowls are really big right now. So this comes with cauliflower, brown rice, uh, a lot of different toppings. I mean, it is a salad bar upscale done on major steroids. You're looking at the roasted Brussels sprouts. It also comes with tofu, salmon, grilled chicken. And the last picture is our individual um, mesa board, which this, this item came out of COVID. Uh, right now we're, at, we're not really doing buffets or self-serve stations. So this is a great way to do a preset item for guests and it has your own little personal charcuterie. And this shows some of the creative ways that we, we present our food items. As we know, we eat with our eyes first, then smell, then taste. So as a caterer, and if you're planning on going down that, don't, going down that road, you really want to focus on this. It, it's not just about food that tastes good. It's about food that presents well, that holds up well. Sometimes our stations will be open for, you know, an hour to two hours. And we want it to look as fresh that first hour as when the last guest comes through. Awesome. So I know that we do have, um, you know, several of our participants are involved in culinary programs um, here, mostly in the Northern Virginia area. Um, you know, some are from other parts of the, the Commonwealth. So I'm sure they're really excited. And so um, any of you all who are in the culinary programs, if you have questions that are specific to, you know, catering and culinary or anything of that nature, Steve is the person that if you want to highlight to ask him directly. Um, otherwise, we will um, we'll check the chat periodically here, but we're going to move on to our next speaker. So our next speaker that we have is India Rhodes, CSEP. And for you all um, who don't know, CSEP stands for Certified Special Event Professional. So India has taken the time to prepare for, take a test, and then actually pass the test at a certain level to be designated at a, as a special certified special event professional. So definitely someone that you would want to have to put on your events. So I'm going to tell you a little bit about India, and then we're going to have you have her tell you a little bit about that video that you saw that some of you may have seen um, in the beginning, and then talk about a couple of her events. But um, India has a degree in theater production, and she brings an event. She brings to each event a perspective that marries artistic flair with the stage director's eye for synchrony and precision in the execution of even the smallest details. She is a master of actualizing. Unconventional, unconventional concepts through complex production, finding innovative solutions to creatively tell her client's story and share their vision. India creates her multidiscipline background and credits her multidiscipline background and extensive travel as key to her creativity, production know-how, and intrinsic flexibility. India has overseen projects ranging from product launches to luxury destination weddings 
to social soirees attended by royalty. Her clients include Disney, Johnson & Johnson, Electronic Arts, and countless others. Currently, she serves as the ILEA Southwest Regional Vice President and a proud member of the Search 100 Foundation. Um, India's work has also given her the opportunity to be recognized and awarded um, special recognition in areas such as the Special Events Magazine, which is an electronic or it's a magazine that's produced by the events um, industry. Also, the ILEA Esprit Awards. She has been a recipient of several of those awards for her work and also the NACE One Awards. So India, if you wouldn't mind to share with us a little bit about the video that we saw and also a little bit about these photos um, that we're sharing as well. Gladly. Uh, hi all, my name is India Rhodes, as Tiffany said. Uh, I am based in Texas normally. I am currently living in Denver, Colorado during this crazy time. Uh, so I hopefully some of y'all got to see the video prior to this, uh, but if you didn't, if you look in the upper uh, left and right hand corners, that was a social event I produced in a citywide park, closed down four streets, 1200 people. Um, it was a circus inspired event. So you name it, live animals. Um, we dropped a Ferris wheel carousel. Uh, we had a generator blow, actually had to replace the Ferris wheel in eight hours, which is much more challenging than it sounds. Uh, and yeah, so I specialize pretty much in luxury events, about half corporate, half social. Uh, that, I mean, the video, I think, really showcased what we do. Uh, we create memories, we create moments. Uh, the other images you see on your screen are actually from a property launch that I produced in Austin, Texas. Uh, it's a 39-story building with an elevator the size of a post-it note, so you can't fit a king-size mattress in it, so getting things up and down was very entertaining. Uh, we also had aerialists that we utilized that performed off the side of this 39-story tall building uh, that overlooks 6th Street, so everyone on 6th Street got to get the vibe. Uh, the building is called the Bowie after, uh, G after Jim Bowie, part of Texas history. So we kind of paired it with a uh, Bowie versus Bowie theme, which was super cool and had uh, local caterers and local restaurants near this property um, do all the food for it, which was super fun. Awesome. Thank you so much, India. And next up, and I'm going to just back out of our presentation for just a second to do something, so I think we should be set. Excellent. So next up we have Sharon Reed. She is the owner of Focus and Fabulous, Fabulous Events. She owns a photo booth rental company and lives in Richmond. Sharon received her bachelor's degree in business administration and marketing from Howard University School of Business, and she has always had an entrepreneurial bug growing up. She doesn't come from the photography world, but after experiencing a photo booth at a party, she had no question that this was the business and the industry for her. So how many of you all can think about going to a party or going to an event and saying, oh my gosh, I could do this, I wanna do this. So that's what happened to Sharon. Um, with her events, she's actually had the opportunity to do both entertainment for social and corporate events in Washington, D.C. and Richmond, Virginia. She attributes her success to her dynamic networking and relationship building skills. Sharon has been asked to speak several times with the photo booth ind industry, and she did a phenomenal training on growing your business through networking. Sharon was chosen to serve on the photo booth professional advisory board and works with photo booth software company Pick Pick Social as a brand ambassador and an affiliate for all three of their software platforms. She hopes one day to pass on her business to her son, Aaron, who she is grooming to be an entrepreneur. And as you can see, Sharon is involved with um, the International Live Events Association in Virginia and um, also part of the Photo Booth Association Advisory Board. Sharon, can you tell us a little bit about these different photos that you provided um, for us to all see? Definitely. Hi, everybody. Um, the first uh, picture there with me in it um, was for a annual gal gala. Um, I work with uh, large organizations, corporations um, throughout the year, and a lot of times they put on annual events, and this is just one of those. Um, directly underneath that, that was a great social event we did for John Wall, the um, NBA player, um, at his home for Halloween. He coined it Walloween and had the entire um, basketball team come out to his house and, and have some fun and we got to have fun with them. 
um, to the right of that or to the left of that. I can't remember um, how you see it. <laughs> That's me um, doing a green screen event we did for the Federal Department of Forensic Science. So that was a very interesting um, event where it was a family day. They had their friends and family come to the uh, building in Washington, D.C., go through the labs, and we provided a green screen virtual photo booth so that they could put themselves in one of the labs, try on goggles, white jackets. We also did a crime scene where they were able to put on um, bulletproof vests and carry around different samples and things like that. So um, the top corner photo where it says Five Guys and Coca-Cola was um, actually a, a franchisee trade show for people that owned Five Guys around the country. Um, and we did the photo booth for Coca-Cola, who was trying to get the franchisees to purchase uh, one of those freestyle machines where you get like 200 different sodas in them. Uh, we had the polar bear come out with us. So everybody wanted to stop and take pictures at the photo booth for um, Five Guys. Excellent. And Sharon, although this is a question we could save for later, but we'll go ahead and ask now. And um, Ben, and I know India and probably the others experience it as well. But um, you mentioned that it was uh, one of your events involved, we'll just term them as a celebrity. Um, are there certain um, things that you have to actually deal with when you're dealing with celebrities or, you know, confidentiality agreements with any yeah. of your events? Yeah, and especially this one. Actually, this is the only photo I'm allowed to show from that event. Um, yeah, he had to sign off, make sure there was any not, nothing inappropriate um, or um, binding to his promotions that he does. So, you know, what he was behind us, what he had in his hand, everything had to be, you know, looked over by his attorney before we could release this picture and none of the other pictures. So we always make sure we are very conscious and we ask questions um, ahead of time, get all the details before we do an event so that we are not, you know, doing anything wrong. So yeah, it's Excellent. very sensitive when working with celebrities. Excellent. And we know that India probably has a lot of that same, um, the same um, areas as well. Yeah. So thank you so much. So now on to our final presenter, and then we have just a little bit more information, and then we're going to have the Q&A time. But our final panelist, um, also from Virginia, is Barbara Barrington. Barbara has worked at the Courtyard Marriott in downtown Norfolk for over five years. Before becoming their director of sales, Barbara held several positions within the hospitality industry, starting as a front desk clerk. So she's definitely gone from the front end customer service to now in a management position. Barbara's current responsibilities include proactively selling event space and catering for the over 1,700 square foot meeting room, selling guest rooms to social and corporate groups, and arranging corporate rates for project and long-term accounts. Currently in her second term as the president of the International Live Events Association Virginia chapter, she works with planners and vendors from all over the Southeast to increase educational awareness in the events industry. Barbara also enjoys spending time at home with her husband and Corgi, particularly in the fall, as she is puts her creative juices to work preparing for her annual Halloween hunt display. Barbara is a graduate of Longwood University in Virginia and majored in business administration. And Barbara, could you tell us a little bit about the pictures that you um, submitted to share with our participants today? Most definitely, and thank you very much for inviting me to this panel. I'm very excited. It's very encouraging to hear that people are, you know, uh, enthusiastic about joining this industry, uh, especially with everything going on. Um, but yeah, so I obviously handle a little bit of more of the smaller event side. Most of the budgets for my event are under 15,000. Um, but I wanted to kind of give you some examples of how flexibility kind of really plays a part in what I do. Um, the top two uh, pictures that you see is actually an event that we did for a fundraiser for a school group. And the event was supposed to be 100 people, ticket sales topped that, um, a room block for about the same size. And uh, pretty much a couple days before the event, the uh, planners realized that they sold 190 tickets. Uh, and that the room block had actually doubled as well. So we needed to multi, you know, deal with the different um, obstacles of finding guest rooms and building that in, but then also dealing with the extra space needs <laughs> that we had to work with. So we ended up having to move the events around, change which rooms they were gonna be in. Um, we were gonna do an event outdoors, but weather was gusting at like 30 miles an hour, so we couldn't do it on our terrace. Um, so we ended up hosting it so that all 200 people, we closed our lobby, put them all in the lobby, and 
decided to go ahead and do their um, their chopped food competition in our lobby instead. So that was kind of cool because people who were kind of checking in off to the side that you don't see um, got to witness a little bit of the event. So that was a lot of fun. Um, but obviously it's, it's a big thing to be kind of flexible and prepare for the unexpected in this business. Um, and like India had said, you know, they lost a, a Ferris wheel and had to have one transported in. For us, it was a power issue. We didn't realize that by moving things to the lobby, it was gonna be a power issue. So we suddenly had to bring in some generators, but you learn to kind of go with the flow with some of those. Um, and then some of the other two pictures are just some of the events. They actually, the one with the striped tablecloths is actually post COVID. Um, we did that just a couple of weeks ago where we helped them get a balloon arch in and just help them transform the space to try to be accommodating with social distancing and try to keep things a little bit further apart than we normally would have. So just trying to say that, yes, it is still possible to have events right now. Um, there's just some additional factors we have to think about um, and that you have to convey to your clients. Um, and the picture that has kind of the blue, that was just our representation to show a client that, you know, even a simple addition like pipe and drape and just changing it with up lights can really change the atmosphere of your event without breaking your budget. Um, so consider things that, you know, you wouldn't normally and, and consider what you might offer a client to give them a feel of what they're looking for. Um, and that was just for part of a holiday party where we did a bunch of other things on the other half of the room. But um, so an easy way to figure out how to work with your budget and your clients. Excellent. Thank you, Barbara. Um, we're going to turn over to some Q&A, and this is where we also want to have you all, we um, add your questions in the chat. Again, if you have something specific that you want to ask a certain person, you can make sure to put that in that section. Um, and then also, I'm not going to, I'm going to stop sharing the screen, so I uh, actually will be able to see everybody as well. But if you have any questions, you can put them in the chat. The other thing we would love for you to do is, we know that we have students who are on here who might be in some of the maybe culinary or hospitality programs. Maybe could you share with us, you don't have to be lengthy, I promise we won't like check spelling or anything like that. But um, you know, what are some things that have been different for you all? Because some of you maybe were in the classroom five days a week or multiple days a week, you know, a, a year ago this time, but now um, maybe you're doing some of your classes online with your teachers or, um, and maybe some of you are actually going to your schools or to your campus to do some of your activities. So maybe just in the chat um, for the students and also the administrators that are on here, if you wanna share, you know, what are some of the things that you've had to do differently um, because this next question that I'm, we're gonna ask and we're gonna have all of the panelists respond to, we think that you all can probably really relate. And so we wanna hear what some of the challenges have been for you all as well. So I'm gonna stop sharing here real quick and actually see everyone. So um, let's start out first with um, this question. What has been or what are the most challenging experiences that you've had to deal with when it's come to COVID and dealing with COVID or challenges? And Barbara, we'll start with you because you're pinned up on my screen. So I'm going to have you go first and then we'll actually um, go back with the rest of our panelists um, in the order that we went through initially. Sure. Um, so for me, as I kind of said, dealing with the social distancing um, has probably been the biggest obstacle for us. Um, I don't have a large amount of meeting space, so making it so my attendees can still have that intimate client feel, but have to still be six feet apart has probably been the hardest for us. Um, trying to introduce people into, you know, a buffet line that you can still accomplish, but there's a lot of new rules that come with that, like keeping the tables six feet apart, even for being in line at a buffet and making sure that you have sneeze guards, sneeze guards and all the PPE equipment that you're supposed to have. And, um, there's just a lot of little details that I think have definitely come into play. Um, but most of it has really just been, you know, the social distancing aspect. Excellent. And how about Steve? So my issues have been the same as Barb's, but probably the bigger one is having the conversations with the brides and grooms that have been planning their special day for two, three years now. And it, it, it doesn't look like what they thought it was going to look like. So it's, and remembering that we are, we are professionals that produce dreams and we have to, we have to be approachable. We have to counsel, um, 
I, I've had, I had one bride in particular that it just crushed my heart. And I mean, we're still dealing with this. We never thought on March 15th, that's when we started working from home, that this is going to be seven months. And you're still having the conversations with, you know, the mothers that, you know, their families are in the Northeast and they can't travel down here because they can't afford to uh, quarantine for two weeks on the back end when they go back. Um, and then flipping from weddings to, you know, um, funerals, you know, you don't get the opportunity. We do a lot of repasses here and we, they probably become a big part of our business now because we do have some beautiful gardens. So you can't say goodbye to your loved one in an effective way. Um, it, it's been emotional, you know, from that standpoint. Gotcha. I mean, definitely a lot of things that people have to kind of manage, like managing their emotions and then also their finances. So it's kind of a lot right. for people. Absolutely. Absolutely. Awesome. India, what about you? What have you noticed? And India, I don't think I mentioned, but you do things both in Texas and in Colorado, like kind of- uh, I mean, Colorado. we work internationally and all my dust, I mean, I could tell you uh, all my destination projects are uh, gone. I was actually at a, an event conference called the special event in March, uh, about four days before they shut down Vegas with a bunch of other event professionals, which is interesting. Uh, my corporate work, uh, originally we're, traditionally we're half corporate, half social. My corporate has uh, pushed or canceled for the most part to uh, 2021. But that being said, I, I've, we've still been working. We've still produced a few weddings. Um, we scale the quantity of individuals. You don't need 300 people. Um, you could do it with 80 and be perfectly happy and have an even better uh, production because if we get to keep the same amount of budget, then we just kind of um, put the money into uh, better wine, better food, um, more entertainment that's 25 feet away from you, uh, according with CDC guidelines. Um, but that being said, I, you know, we are a women-owned business. I'm a family, we are family-owned business. I work with my mother. Uh, so we really took this time to look at our website, which I was hoping would be finished prior to this presentation. Uh, we've redone our proposals. We've uh, gone to an online contract and talked with our attorney, um, you know, just kind of restructuring internally in order to be better prepared for when things do come back. Because when when it hits, like when things start lessening up, I really do believe with all these events that are pushing backwards, we need to be prepared to like really move forward very quickly and efficiently. Mm -hmm. uh, I can also tell you my team, we've uh, kind of started producing stage sets for virtual conferences and things like that too, and just kind of changing our mindset. Um, and, that's, and that's a positive thing. So we're, we're trying to like look on the bright side of, of COVID as much as we can and uh, just, benefit as much as we can. Excellent. And Sharon, how about you? What's, what's been, what have been the changes and the challenges and then pivots in, uh, for you? Definitely. Um, a lot of what everyone is saying um, in my seven years of working in the event industry, I've never had a cancellation. I've never had to tell someone I can't come. So it's, that's, that took a lot and in, in the beginning. Um, and then it was like, okay, now we have to transition. Now we have to pivot. And so we didn't have a product that we could sell at that point. So we went straight to our, our um, vendors, our software people, and we're like, hey, we have to figure out some way to get out here and still continue our business. Um, I do this full time. I am a, uh, a SWAM certified uh, <laughs> vendor. So that means I am um, a minority. I am a small business. It's just me. And so this was my baby and I couldn't see it, you know, go to go away. So we flipped into the virtual world. So there's a lot of virtual events here. We are in a virtual event and we support virtual events with a virtual photo booth. So we are always working or working hard to bring the same experience to your virtual event that you would have at a live event. Um, and then also there are events going on. We are doing outdoor weddings and things like that. And we have um, tried to transition our booths into touchless, uh, bringing in touchless features. Who knew QR, code, QR codes would come back so heavy? So we are using lots of QR codes and um, trying to be as safe as possible during this time. Excellent. And this question, um, I think I'll start out with asking India and then if um, Sharon and Barbara could answer. Um, and India, I know that your company that you're a partner with is Wilkinson Roads. And um, I know we were having a discussion at one point in time about some of the things that are sometimes a little bit of a challenge when you're having volunteers um, or people that are, you know, working events for you. Um, but 
how can students tie in their academics or their extracurriculars um, related to the event industry? And are there any challenges that you face? And maybe India, if you want to start out with that, because I know we talked about some things related to age restrictions. Uh, I highly recommend if you can go out and volunteer with um, associations, charity associations, especially if you're a high school student. Um, a, it's great credit, but B, it gives you good experience uh, in normally pretty safe environments. I tend to hire or I hire or have interns that are normally at least 21 years of age or up. We do have a lot of equipment in my warehouse, uh, everything from CNC machines to table saws, you name it. Uh, there's a lot of gear. It's, it's um, kind of a liability. Also the whole alcohol thing on site because uh, we prefer, we actually don't prefer, we tell you, please do not drink on a site. That should, should have to be said, but it does. Um, I think that in terms of opportunities, there's so many associations out there right now to like the International Events Association or NACE um, that do offer uh, mentorship programs and look into those. They're, they're a great way to get involved. Uh, Go work at a restaurant. You're going to learn a lot. I feel like everybody should work at a restaurant at some point in their life. It teaches you so many skills. Um, and that being said as well, you know, intern, talk, talk to your entertainment people. I inter interned for an entertainment company. I interned for a magazine company at one point. I did a lot of interns, internships to figure out who I am as a person. And I think it's a great growth opportunity. Excellent. Thank you. Sharon, do you have anything uh -huh. to add? Yeah, so um, you know, working with college students is very um, close to my heart. My son is in college, he's a junior. And so I am always on college campuses working with students. Um, there's a great um, app called Handshake and I'm able to find students uh, that are looking for internships or looking for paid opportunities. Um, and so we can, we can collaborate that way. Um, also, if you're in an organization on campus, a sorority, a fraternity, you know, look at those opportunities to volunteer your time to um, be on the committee for whatever type of event it is. And that just gives you more experience. And please document, 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 TikTok it, put it on Instagram, make sure you are um, capturing these moments. And so when you do go into the into an interview with an event planner, you know, what have you done? Well, these are the things that I've done. Don't think that just because you, you know, did a party like you normally would that is, isn't considered doing an event. So everything you do, document and cherish those moments and create wonderful memories in college. Excellent. And are there things that any of them could do if they are, let's say, under 21, that types of activities that they could do for, you know, as business owners, like to help you all, like as interns or anything? Yeah, for us, um, like I said, certain events, we can't take anyone under 21, but there's plenty of events that I do have that I hire, um, you know, daily work for. So, you know, using the photo booth, setting it up. I, I'm also looking for anyone who's really heavily um, involved in social media, creating YouTube pages. Um, I, I always look for help in things that I don't know how to do. And I know um, the younger generation is very quick with it. Excellent. Barbara. Anything that you would add that could be different? No, I definitely agree with what everyone else had said. Um, I, I would say to the under age, the being under 60 or under uh, 21, um, there's a lot of aspects to the event industry. Um, there are a lot of reports that get run. There's a lot of documentation with seating charts and inventorying and ordering um, that all get done behind the scenes. Um, so yes, if you can handle, you know, um, basic programming, if you are good with a computer and can figure out how to even run just Excel and Word, uh, that's helpful to us. Um, for me, I'm a little bit older and not, I don't navigate social media as, as smoothly as, you know, some of you guys probably do. Um, so yes, I'm always looking for people who can help us get more active on social media, particularly with our events. So while there may not be day of things that you can do, you can certainly be supportive on the back end. And honestly, that's where you're going to learn the most, in my opinion, is to see how it was supposed to be run behind the scenes. Um, because you're all, I mean, you can go to any website and see what it looked like in a video. Everybody's going to have a video that says this is how great the event was. But understanding, you know, this is what the duck on the pond looked like, but this is how the feet were scuttling is really the fascinating part. It's like watching a theater presentation. You know, you can see the stage presentation, but understanding the, the aspects of what went on behind it, that's where you really get the, all the guts. So yes, volunteer, get involved. If you have uh, events that are coming up, plan them, be a part of them, start something just for fun and 
everything that you do now is going to be a part of that learning process. You're going to under start to understand what what the timelines mean and how they relate to each other and what a budget is going to have to consist of and how, you know, food and beverage costs so much more. It's a huge part of your budget and you'll start to see that a little bit. So I would say just get involved and, you know, ask. Excellent. And Barbara, since you're still on, so we can transition. Um, there's a question that said, any tips for people that are shy and are trying to get into the industry, especially when networking is a big part of forming these important relationships? Oh, gosh, yes. Um, believe it or not, I'm actually very much an introvert. Yeah, <laughs> uh, I know that person. Prefer, <laughs> right? Like, Tiffany knows this. Like, you kind of have to urge me out of it. Um, and go figure. Now I'm the president of ILEA still. Um, yes, don't let that hold you back. Um, I am definitely one of those people that when I go to a networking, I will start with kind of the people I know and then slowly start to get out to some of the others. Um, and it's, it can be intimidating for, you know, somebody who is introverted. Um, but don't let it stop you. Um, I had a very high thirst and curiosity of wanting to know how it worked. I'm one that when I saw that theater presentation, when I see videos like India's and I go, oh my God, I really want to know what that took to do it. Um, that's what drove me to reach out and get involved. Um, and I will tell you, the, the theater industry, just like the events industry, we are so welcoming and, and, and inviting to you. We want you to embrace us. We want to invite you in and help you um, experience the excitement that it is. Uh, there's so many fun things about this industry. And once you start getting to work with other people and start talking to them more, um, I think you'll find that shyness kind of melts away because you have a family. You have a whole group of people that are no longer just business people. They are your community. They're the ones that are your support group. Excellent. And um, we have a comment from the chat. Um, a sneak tip is start with someone you know, introduce them to the person whose name you can't remember and do not know. Um, and that comment is awesome because I am a complete extrovert. I love people. I forget names. And I just say like, oh, hi, Barb. I'm going to introduce you to a friend of mine. And then I let Sharon say, oh, hi, my name's Sharon. So yes, um, from the chat, thank you so much, Carol. Um, the next question I wanna actually ask is for Steve and um, Carol, hopefully we're gonna ask this correctly. So if not, just you know, type in the chat and help clarify. But if you have an event where there's gonna be like, I guess you're dropping off something, like maybe dropping off supplies or food or something, how do you arrange with the local department of transportation and maintain or I guess also and maintain distancing during COVID. So I hope that's enough information, Steve, to kind of ask and Carol let us know if we need to clarify. My first, que my first question to that is, are we talking guest drop off or equipment drop off? Oh, good question. Carol, if you're able to type in the chat, um, what you, guest drop off. Guest drop off, got it. So the first thing you wanna do is make sure you're familiar with your city or states um, laws about stuff like that. Uh, and here in Atlanta, unless if you're not on a public street, you're fine. You can do pretty much anything you want to. Uh, from a COVID standpoint, though, it does take a lot of planning. So you want to plan for people to arrive at a given time and then have um, prompters counting, you know, buses um, and making sure that that the right amount of people are being admitted to get on the buses uh, that are still maintaining a six um, six feet uh, six feet dis social distancing. You can also work with the transportation company and have them pre-mark the seats. So while they're on the bus, they're not they're not sitting beside of each other. Or you know, we do this at wedding receptions. We actually are doing ceremony seating charts uh, where they have a get they have a a they're given like a paddle. So each person will get one. So if you set on a row for people, the two people can set the paddle down and that way nobody's sitting beside them. And then the next group would do the same thing on their side. So that is a subtle way of doing social distancing. And you could introduce something like that in, into a bus, a bus situation. Uh, I'm, the, I'm going to be real with this. Um, when you get involved, when you get alcohol involved, uh, we've been producing events just FYI so during this time. When alcohol gets involved, all social distancing rules, you know, you go pretty much go away. <laughs> so 
you have to, people feel they're comfortable with seeing um, that our service staff is in masks and gloves and that we're not reaching in if we're laying in dinner service, we're waiting until the table's clear or at least give us an opportunity. So people that do feel comfortable know that we're living up to the standards. And that's the same thing that would have to happen with the transportation company. Excellent. And Steve, I'm just going to go ahead and ask you this question since it was asked for you, is how do you juggle all of the different things that you do? It's very inspiring <laughs> to hear that because, you know, the individual um, that wrote this said that they want to do so much and it all involves being in this industry, but they said, I guess you can say they're all separated if that makes sense. <laughs> so it's funny. I was just having this conversation yesterday, then again this morning with somebody about how to juggle schedule. Um, I believe in time blocks. If, you, if I was to share my screen and show you my calendar, I allot for everything in my day. Like I get up at 5.30, I am on the treadmill at six, I am off the treadmill and working out at 7.30, I am out of the house by 8.30, I'm in the office by nine, and I have my meetings um, assigned like that. If you start with your personal calendar, then that makes you a better professional because now you understand, you know, you are in a mindset of, I have an hour to complete this task. And if you're an overachiever like I am, you try to complete multiple tasks within that hour. So it actually puts your head. When you get into planning events, you have to operate on a timeline. I, I think everybody on here uh, would agree that if you don't have a timeline, you don't have an event because you don't know, you, you don't know what, what's coming next. Um, so you really have to be organized and plan from that standpoint. Um, I also try to group life things together. And so I am serving on the Atlanta board as director of memberships, but I'm also the chair of the diversity and equity and inclusion task force for international. And I am sitting on the national events council. So two of those are diversity related. So it's very easy for me to wear, to wear two different hats, but talk the same talk. So a lot of the stuff that I'm doing for the Atlanta diversity is actually what I position myself with the National Events Council to do. So I, I, I'm killing two birds with one stone. Excellent. Um, and India, I think uh, it seems like we're kind of getting closer to our questions here. So I'm gonna ask you kind of two questions, India, and then if we have any more in the chat, because um, we do wanna make sure that we end our time at three. But India, two questions for you. The first one is from the chat, what has worked for you to stay on top of things as in prioritizing, or is it just finding what works for you? So I guess, do you use any type of systems? And then also, can you tell us, I think India, you probably have the, one of the closest relationships to our students as far as you kind of grew up in this world of hospitality and events and culinary and all of that. And then where has that brought you to now? So okay. I didn't, uh, too much of a loaded right. question. <laughs> All right. Uh, first question, what do I do to stay on top of things? Um, like Steve said, he, I have a pretty um, intense schedule. I also put blocks in between things because um, sometimes presentations or client meetings run over or I just need that like mental um, break to decompartmentalize. Um, what do I mean by blocks? So I literally like, like I, um, 5 30 in the morning as you can tell we all get up really early too uh <laughs> or what i consider early uh 5 30 in the morning to 6 a.m like hot tea check emails news go for run which hasn't happened recently because uh we've had fires in colorado um from there like you know i schedule a team meeting every morning so i know exactly what my team's doing because we are spread in a variety of different cities right now. Um, so just kind of, that's what I mean by blocking out. Like I specifically on my calendar have like specific times, like 8.30 to 9.30, this to that, free time. Free time is scheduled out. Um, and that, that helps me same, stay on top of things. I was just would that be the same like with the students where they might have like their classes, here's my time for my classes. Exactly. Here's when and I, I did this study, here's when I maybe could volunteer. Yeah, for an event. here's when I have rehearsal, uh, you know, and, and leave a couple of free spaces because things do change. Now, on staying on top of things on an event site, I have a whole team and we, we distribute duties to each other uh, with one person who oversees the entire project. Uh, we always schedule extra time for things to um, 
be created or for things to go wrong because unfortunately behind the scenes, uh, like we talked about behind the curtain, there is a wizard uh, and making sure that we, somebody manages to figure out a solution uh, in, a, in a quickly time, in a quick time of manner, I guess. Uh, and then I guess, Tiffany, your question about growing up in the industry mm -hmm. and as a student, I, I, I'm actually an introvert as well. Um, it probably doesn't show, but that being said, taking the time to ask people questions and saying, hey, um, when I first, I moved, to, I was in Dallas for 10 years. When I first moved to Dallas, I was working as an actor and I was bartending. I uh, realized I wanted um, to change my lifestyle. I bought, I bought a 401k um, and went into the family business. But before that, I did, I did work for a few other people. I worked for um, a man named Donnie Brown, who's been on quite a few wedding shows as well. I, I moonlighted for AV companies. I did whatever it took just to kind of learn. And that's really how I ended up, um, I mean, florists, I know more about flower, flowers than I should ever know and how you like soak the foam at certain angles gives you more water. Uh, but that being said, I think that's also what led me to, you know, associations and finding the, that niche and finding people who mentored me to the person I am now, but are still mentors in a way that they're sounding boards and uh, continuously trying to, to educate myself, uh, whether it's the CSEP certification uh, or something along that line. Um, just like when you're green, you're growing. When you're ripe, you're rotting. I'm a big believer in that. <laughs> Excellent. Um, India, and that's so great because you really actually kind of took us into um, our next part here to kind of uh, sort of end our session together. Um, you all can still keep typing questions in the chat. Um, we will, you know, end um, right, on, right at three, but we'll still try to stay on if any of the um, team members can stay on. I know a couple of the panelists have another presentation right after this, but um, I can stay on it um, if you have additional questions. But as India mentioned about getting involved in associations, and so what we wanted to do is provide you in the links um, on the PowerPoint, you'll actually be able to click on the links for all of these associations. So the International Live Events Association, um, the National Association of Catering Executives, National Press Photographers Association, Meeting Professionals International, and the Photo Booth Association. Many of these associations have student rate memberships. Sometimes it might be a certain age or you might have to be in college. But um, you know, if you're interested and want to know more, then definitely reach out. And even if there isn't something that says that it's a high school age um, appropriate, feel free to email their, um, email their info ad and see what types of information can be um, you know, still accessed um, or you know, be able to have the um, ability to learn more about. So those are the different associations that we just chose, and there are tons. So um, please know that whatever your interests lie, you might um, have different interests, but they all have student membership options. And then the other thing that we've included so that when you do receive this presentation is just information about um, the hospitality management program at Northern Virginia Community College, as well as the culinary arts certificate and our hospitality management food service, um, the AAS programs um, for that. So. That is actually um, the last part of information that I have um, with our STEM careers session for our um, culinary events and hospitality presentation. If you'd like to register for future events, you can register at career.novastem.us slash register. 